Hello guys, it's Thomas, and I am back with part 5 of KSP Interstellar, and, well, in this episode you can see me testing some stuff and going all the way to lathe. So, right here you see me launching this test vehicle. I'm just boosting this thing up into orbit so I can just see how it functions when re-entering the atmosphere, because I did not want anything to happen. And sadly, I was a little stupid. I forgot because I was meaning to test both modules, as in both compartments, as in the science lab and the actual return vehicle. But I was also up there and did some testing with the sciences. Just, you know, did stuff with that. I don't really know. And there are decoupled the two boosters, boosters, which was my mistake. Because now I have no way to thrust back down. And put that thing into the surface. Now you'll see that I tried to um, thrust backwards. I mean, f well, face prograde and thrust backwards right here to um, boost it back, but it didn't quite work. It maybe gave it like five meters per second the other direction, nowhere near enough. And then I almost ran into the other vehicle. So I thought, eh, I might as well test this thing going in at quick speeds. And well, apparently this whole testing was kind of useless because I didn't end up using this vehicle. And by the way, those yellow blips you see on the screen, I'm pretty sure it's thorium, because I have a sensor for it on this. And I'm not using this because in the next mission I got new sciences, which lets me unlock superior thrust, thrusting ways. So I'm pretty much like, sacrifice this thing back to the atmosphere. Well, not really. I just wanted to see how much waste heat it would make and apparently not that, not that much. So, if you see, I did this whole video in this new editing format of mine, and when and well by that format, I mean it's completely edited, or well, very, very edited, to the point where it took me about three hours to edit this video. And guess what? This is actually the first of July, I think, and this is probably going to be going up later because I'm about to go on vacation for for a whole week. So, I'm going to keep this spread till the 4th or so, and hopefully I'll have enough videos to cover it over the week, over my vacation. And here I'm testing Liz. Thrusting just a bit to keep, to keep my velocity con consistent. And now I start feeling the actual burning. Well, it's not really burning. You're not really lighting anything on fire, actually. And everyone says that the heat is caused by friction from the air. Well, that's partially true, but most of it's just the quick, com the very quick compression of all of the gases that causes most of the heat. So, of course, my common problem that I have a lot of the time is pressing shift way too many times to adjust my throttle and lend it accurate sticky keys, which then tabs me out, and then I need to go back in, hope I haven't crashed into the surface, and keep recording. So that's a little problem. And other, oh, by the way, if I'm sounding kind of weird, it's because I just got braces. And that little blip you heard right there, that was the caps lock thing. So yeah, braces, I'm in pain. Take enough pain meds to keep most of the pain away though. Well, some of it, I guess. And I set the um, parachute, parachutes to 50 meters. And a nice little touchdown. Nothing exploded. Got some science, not a lot, but some. So recover that vessel. Any second now, and yeah, about now. And now we got a 70, about 70 science from that mission. So go back to the research and go and buy some stuff. Yeah, I bought the new plane parts, and I think that's it, yeah. And so now you see me, I am going all around. Now, this craft is actually different. So those things on the top are infrared telescopes. And those things, those black things right below them, those are, can't, I think it's helium-3. And so you see me just burning straight up. So I get one, I get one, since this whole rig, I have two telescopes. Each of them gives me 0.5 science per day. And I messed up on the staging here, wasn't quite paying attention, so that wasn't the problem. But each satellite gives me 0.5 science per day. And I have two of them. And I, you need those, um... Helium canisters power. I think one lasts each one lasts about 270 days and since I have two telescopes and two canisters That means about 270 days on the span of this craft 
which then equates to about 270 slants. So it's a fair amount. So I just thrust the thing up, and it's pretty much just leave it. Put it. Put, I put it into an, an inclination where there's no chance of it ever, well, very little chance of it ever reaching back. And so now you see I just decoupled it, and yeah, pretty much just have to let it sit there, make sure it has enough electricity, because the helium does boil off a lot quicker if you do not have it powered. Like, I think it's like five times quicker, so that would mean five times less science. So this next rig, very large, but you can't guess where this is going. Well, this is going all the way to lathe. So, I cut this down also. I still edited it. Edited. I'm, I have problems saying this later in the episode, too. It's kind of funny. I just can't manage to say it. Okay, well, I edited this down. And it's, it was like something like three hours of footage, not counting the time lapse, which is later on, which was another two hours by itself. So, this is about five, well, five, seven hours of work if you include all the editing time, and man, I'm tired. So you can't hate on those engine sounds that just went off. And now we get a wait. Well, I get a wait. You guys don't get a wait. You guys can, you know, skip through this if you want. And so it's just a while, a lot of thrusting. And now I've finished this burn. It's really just a bunch of inclination changes, so I might as well talk about what this craft has. So it has all the basic science except for the negative gravioli detector, but it has like the magnetometer, I think. I think that's what it's called. It's this big bar thing, and it's acti it um, can sense um, electromagnetic, no not electromagnetic, um, magnetic layerings of a, a planet's magnetic field or moon. So there's that. It's very useful because later on when we're trying to get antimatter, we will need it to um, see where we will be most profitable from gathering it because there's certain rings and bands which antimatter normally, well, and naturally tends to be around. So that's why you need that. So now you see I'm close to it and uh, not quite an, an encounter, but pretty close. Some more correction burns. Man, my braces are hurting because I'm accidentally like biting my teeth together sometimes and it's kind of painful. <laughs> oh, I regret everything. Everything I regret. And so now you see me getting closer and closer and closer in. And I know I'm getting closer in because it's going to slingshot me farther out. And about to do another inclination change. Probably. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, here it is. So burning this one too, I need to learn how to edit this better because this is still painfully long for me. And, well, this is a slower burn, but it, I got it. It's fine, guys. Totally not going to crash multiple times later on. And I might as well point out a major mistake that I made right here. Well, all kind of made right here. So if you look closely, actually you can't see the jewel yet, so you wouldn't know. Oh, now you can see Jewel. I'm going around the opposite way I would want to be going. And I didn't realize it, so I did not correct it. So what that means is I am going the opposite rotate, like the opposite orbital of all the planets, which means I'm 180 degrees off of what I would like to be in my inclination. Which gets what that means. I'm traveling about, I'd say about two kilometers per second faster than I would normally want to be going. So that makes a lot of problems later on, as you'll see. Not quite yet. You don't get me. You don't get to watch me burn up in the atmosphere quite yet. That's an, at about I don't know, thirteen and a half minutes. Thirteen minutes. So here, instead of going to the atmosphere, because I do not want to burn up, because I was pretty sure this craft would, I just burned retrograde because I have plenty of fuel. I mean, well, at least for this time, I thought I had plenty of fuel. And here you heard that um, part, that engine burn out. Didn't quite show it. At least I think it was. I don't remember at this point. Uh, yep, there it was. And just continue burning. And burn, baby, burn, burn. Ah, uh, this is getting long. I'm mean, just talking about random stuff. So, just doing really long burns. I did not like how long this took. Or how long I'm having to narrate this. I think I should stick down to my 10 minute episodes. 
because this was just took too long to edit. So now I'm getting closer to my inclination and everything that I would want to be for lathe. So burning more retrograde. We need more retrograde. Okay, now you see me. I am in. Well, I will be going inside of its sphere of influence. And I'm just narrowing that down closer and closer and closer. Still doing it closer. And also by the what got. Okay, so guys, if you like my new editing style, which is. Uh, it's more just like. Show you what you guys need to know to know I'm not cheating or anything. And so. Do you, if you like it, just post a comment saying that you do. If you don't, well, post a comment saying that you don't. And if you say that, I'll probably just delete it, but at, le at least I'll look at it. <laughs> Abuse the power. Okay, so now I'm fixing my inclination, because I don't want to be going in over the poles, because to my knowledge, there's not much land over the poles. So, just doing this more, and if I got long shot around at that angle, it would not be good. So guys, be happy, you're about to watch me burn up and fail many times going into the atmosphere. So I've realized, hmm, I'm traveling about, I'll, I will be traveling about 6 kilometers per second if I don't do anything right now when I hit the atmosphere. So that is very, very fast. That's like, I'm trying to do the math in my head, 6, 1 point, that's like, I don't know, 8,000 miles an hour or so. I think maybe 9,000. Yeah, I think it's about 9,000 if I'm correct. Yeah, 9,000 miles an hour for you guys in the US. America. But either way, it's very, very fast. And let's just say in a craft, even this craft does not like going in that quickly. So you'll see me this time. I don't think I burn up this time. No, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I'm pretty sure I do. So let's just show this either way. So, yeah, going in very quickly. Slowly accelerating. Well, ex slowly accelerating towards my retrograde point. Since there's technically no such thing as decelerating. I don't know why everyone says there is. I looked in the textbooks. I'm that nerdy. And apparently there is not. So, eh... Yeah, I'm still going down, I'm still burning up, I'm tottering over, which is not necessarily a good thing. I'm using stability to try and keep myself pointed kind of in the right direction. But it just doesn't want to do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I burn up any second now. Maybe, do I? Well, I'm clicking around right now, looking for the magnometer, mag magnometer, whatever. Just getting all the science. And... Yeah, high dynamic pressure, if you look at ferrum air or space, that's essentially telling you, hey, you're about to break up, don't do anything stupid. And well, actually what happens is, I went out of the atmosphere once, and I'm like, oh crap, I'm way too, I'm still on an, an escape trajectory. So what I try to do is go in a bit lower. This is about, I think, one and a half kilometers lower. As you see, that did not work, and it created some nice graphical glitches also. So it stripped pretty much everything I think off. Nope, it didn't strip some of the parachutes, did it? I don't know. And so I tried it again, and uh, this time it was a little bit higher. I, I thrust it a little bit beforehand to try and slow myself down. Still didn't quite work. Even more glitches with the aerodynamics. And I don't think I burn up, yeah, I didn't burn up this time, because I, I went through the atmosphere at about 25 and a half kilometers to make sure I didn't burn up. Used all my fuel to burn retrograde, and eventually I get myself into an well, no, not an orbit, but suborbital. So it it would be a double pass reentry instead of a single pass, which because I do not think I could do that single pass without burning up. So doing a little burn right now to make me land on that island, that tiny little island. But guess what? That island's actually about forty kilometers from side to side. So it was a pain when I learned that on later. But now you get to watch me burn up even more times, I think. I think, yeah, I think it's one more time you get to watch me burn up. Maybe two. I th actually, I think it's two from what the um, sound data looks like. Because it's really loud compared to everything else. Yeah, I think I burn up on this one. Pretty sure I do. So instead of going at um, five kilometers a second, or five and a half, I'm traveling at two and a half. Which is an improvement, but it's still very quick. 
as in a lot quicker than I'd want it to be. And high dynamic pressure, aerodynamic failure, and boom. If you look, ferrum airspace is useful with this stuff, even though ferrum is the one that's causing all this. So, I forgot to record, and I'm like, oh crap, when, well, when I finally made it, this was like 30 times later, I'm like, oh crap, 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 hit the record button, I forgot to start recording. And that's how long it took me to realize. And I lost the landing legs, as future me will remark on. And it was an aerodynamic failure, but I didn't need those metal legs as much as I needed everything else. So, I'm like, I got the main parts then. So, this landing was kind of tedious, it was on a slope, so I did not like it. But I guess it was all right. So, at about the 16 minute mark, I touched down. And I'm like, gotta be careful, do not want to have to redo this whole thing. And it was a nice touchdown, I don't even realize what speed it was. But it was real nice. So, to this part. In between there and there, I did a lot of sciences, did transmit most of it. I'm low on pretty much everything. And I did look at the drop off for the solar panels, and it dro does drop off the farther away. It uses the inverse squared law, which is what physics uses in real life of um, increasing the size of a sphere over a distance, blah blah blah. And just get, you know, do more some more EVA reports on the ladder, which technically is flying, I guess. Because, hey, if you're in a ladder, you're flying. Because that's KSP logic. So now I get back down. I think I took a soil sample. Pretty sure I do. And you guys are going to be ready for the time lapse, which is a pain. And I was stupid about the time lapse. Because, guess what? I did not use any form of physical time accelerate when I was doing it. I only did, I did one time. So I could have probably fit it all. Because I, I, near the end I was like, I'm about to run out of disk space. I do not want to push it. So you don't get to watch the whole rundown. And even if you did, that would still be really long to watch. Because it sped up 32 times. So, that was just a pain. Now, Jebediah's like, how do I get home? Even though it's not really bad being here and lay all by myself. I'm going to keep that science data just so I can go back in. Because I don't even know why it gives you the ability to transmit it. Because you have no antenna on you at the time. So, I don't understand it. But I'm not going to question it. I'm not a programmer. Well, I kind of am. I'm not a good programmer. I can do like five lines of code. That, make a, that makes a fake blue screen of death. And that's about the limit of my coding knowledge. So transmitting all that science now. And EVAing. And gonna go on a little jog. And gonna fall. So later, I might as well tell you all, it's about 20.6 kilometers. And this is but 30 times. So if you see, I didn't use I used no form of time accelerate because I was stupid. So that means I had to wait so much longer. And sorry for the lowish bit, right? Um, I forgot to edit the settings, but yeah, it's fine. So this has been just how it goes. Run, 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 run. Just look at the um, altitude slowly dropping. And in the end, I just skipped all of the rest of the video going there and back because on the way back, I realized I could use the four times time accelerate and I'm just like, oh God, I'm stupid. But it's all fine. I got—I think I got like 200 more signs from it, which was a nice boost. So that was all nice and dandy. And so I'll just leave you with some music by I don't know who, probably Bass Desire, since I have a ten tendency to use their music. So yeah, adios. Well, back to past me in about, I don't know, two minutes now.
Okay guys, well that was really long and painful, so we have Jebediah here, the sun, you might be able to see those specks around, like above the sun, Let's see if we can see any other plants, that looks like Bob or Paul or Tylo, I think it's Tylo, I'm not sure, but look, if we do an EVA report here, nothing new, surface sample anything new, eh, not worth it, but if we go into the water, this is the whole reason they came all the way out here. Surface sample, lay this oceans. We're gonna keep that. Now we do a um, EVA report. Gonna keep that. So that's in like another 100 signs or so. So now begins the painful task of going all the way 20.6 kilometers back. Now I'm going to be back when I get all the way back there. Okay guys, now that I'm back, I would like to explain some stuff that happened. So in the landing you might not have seen it since I think some problems happened with the recording. I'm not sure sure because I've not edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Yeah. I'm Jimmy. No, well I haven't edited it yet. So it seems that my middle landing legs fell apart during re entry. At least that's what it looks like. So let's see if, see if we can do any repeat experiments after we transmit what we have. And we can go to see how much science we have. And I just realized something. Dick Story is still recording at a solid 5 FPS. So I'm going to go fix that. Okay, it's no longer recording at 5 FPS because that's what I had it set to for the time lapse part. Because I did not want to use up all my memory on my computer. So transmit and transmit. Crew report, nothing, any repeat experiments, can't do that, I'm not worth it, log, still not worth it, log, nope, it seems we have used every bit of science we can, so, so, let's go back to the space center, and leave Jebediah there for just a while, and see how much science we have gathered in our endeavor. I, I'm guessing at least 400 or so. So research, oh, a lot more than 400, I guess. So what do I want? I'm gonna go for that, but I also want to get the nuclear, f like the um, refineries and stuff. But I also want to get the planes. Let's start out with this, because this has docking ports, which is just one thing that we need. So there's, there's that. We want that. Ooh. Vision. So, yeah, let's get that and that and that. Can we buy this? So this is some of the bigger stuff. A solar sail. Hmm. Well. I don't know. I don't think we need that yet landing legs because we need this for the planes and we're low on the sciences can we get any other experiments let's have some more experiments and hey look we have that refinery we, refinery we can go use on the moon oh we can't afford it well, this has an, ele an electric generator hmm well, this is a tiny probe so let's go for the electric generator and next time we can go for that to get more experiments. 
But that is for the end of this episode, so thank you for watching, leave a like or a favorite, and, well, adios.